Hey everybody, it's Bob Fox. Welcome back to my channel. And before I get into today's video, I just wanted to send a big thank you to all of you who either commented on my last video about burnout or sent a direct message. I do think it's very important for us to talk about these types of things as makers because we all experience it. And I think whenever we get into our own heads thinking that we're the only ones feeling this way, it can be very, very damaging. So thank you all for that. Anyways, for today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I estimate my filament usage for all of my 3D prints. And it's actually a lot easier than the last method that I showed you. And I have to thank Van Oaks Props for bringing it to my attention in the comment section of that last video. And that is why I will always tell you guys, if you ever wanna make YouTube videos or you ever wanna make tutorial videos on YouTube and you're afraid of like not having all of the answers, don't be, because I swear I learn something new every time I post a tutorial video to YouTube. I learn so much from my community and I greatly appreciate you guys. Anyways, let's get on into Kira and I will show you how it is done. It's very simple. <laughs> so the first thing you're going to do is open up Kira. And if you don't have Kira, I will make sure to link it down below for you. It is a free software. And I'm going to go to the top left and under settings, we're going to click on settings here and then scroll down to configure setting visibility. And here you're probably going to be brought into like print settings. So this is not what we're concerned with. So up here on the left, you're gonna to wanna to click general first. You should have your language set to English, but if you don't, then set it to English or whatever native language that you're going to be using for your you know, computer. And then here is what is going to be the important thing for you to change. And it is going to be the currency here. I can't remember exactly what was here before. I think it may have been a Euro. Thing for me. However, I just went in and changed it to the American dollar sign. And that is all that we need to do for the general settings. So once you've got your language and your currency changed over, we're going to go down to the materials on the left side. Now, whenever you come to this materials tab, you may be a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit overwhelmed because there is a lot going on here. However, you only need to change the types of materials on the left here that you actually print with. So I'm going to click on this generic PLA over here. Now, this is where you're going to want to input your filament costs as well as the filament weight. Now most people are probably going to be printing with those one kilogram spools that go for about $20. So I'm going to put 20 bucks in here, then 1000 kilograms here. So then I'm going to close that out and then your settings should be saved in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up a file. So let's just open up the Mandalorian helmet because I swear that this is the helmet that would just never let me like never let me live, never let me sleep. And also another important thing to note whenever you're trying to estimate filament costs is that filament costs are going to vary wildly depending on how you actually slice your file. So in here, I'm actually just going to do generate supports and then go in and block out the middle supports kind of like I showed in this one video here that I'll link above for you guys. Let's get into actually kind of getting this situated on the print bed a little bit. So as you can see here, the front of it is touching the build plate and all these areas over here that are kind of looking like, you know, they're just floating in midair. Whenever we click generate supports on our model, there will be supports there that will actually fill in that area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll over to the support area under my settings and make sure that generate support is checked. I've got normal. You can use tree supports too that does use less filament. I just like to use normal supports right now. I don't know. It's just a preference. And then I've got support placement everywhere. That is very important for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click slice and this is where we're going to be able to estimate how much filament this is going to use. And it's going to take a minute or so depending on your computer's strength and will to live here. And we will see just how much filament this is going to use before we block out that middle support. As you can see here with my slicer in my specific settings, it says that it's going to take two days, 20 hours and 56 minutes and then about 774 grams of filament. So that is going to end up being about $15.49. My infill density is 10%. I've got an infill pattern of the grid pattern. And then my print speed is 100. That's pretty fast considering this is a Creality printer. I probably shouldn't be flying too close to the sun with that, but I've had success with it and I'm going to be sanding these things down anyway, so I don't really care if they're a little bit rougher looking. And again, this is with the generate support on and we have not blocked out the middle supports yet. Now, obviously, we have to factor in things like print failures. You may have a print start and then it'll go like for 25% of it and then it'll fail. I always like to say, you know, factor in about 250 grams of filament or even more of, you know, loss potentially that you may have to account for. But what we're going to do now, is we're going to block out that middle support in this dome. And this should hopefully get rid of a significant amount of filament usage as well as in turn cost. As you can see under here, there is this just massive amount of filament in here that's literally just going Going towards supports for the dome. So what we're going to do is go over to the left hand side of Kira. So go down to the second from the bottom on the left hand side and you will come across this support blocker tool. So click on that and what we're going to do is I like to go from underneath 
and I'm going to just click and place a block right there. So what we can do now, once we've placed that block there, is go back over to our left-hand side and we can actually kind of maneuver and rotate this block as well as make it larger. So go over to the top and you're gonna to wanna to click on this top button here and make sure you have the block selected under here. Go down to the second tool, the scale tool, click on that. And whenever you come back over to the file, you'll either, you can click on any axis you really want. I'm going to click on this red axis and I'm just going to pull to the right. And as you can see, the block is getting larger. And what we're looking for is to get that block covering this entire red area, which is the area that the supports are generating for. And if you need to, you can also go down to the rotate button. You can also rotate your block as well. I don't really need to do that, so I'm just gonna kind of leave it as is. And then whenever you come back up, you'll see this kind of like weird block looking thing at the top of your model. And that just means that any of the supports that were going to generate that I had shown you before underneath this dome will not generate whenever we slice it again. So let's go back down to the slicer and see how much filament we saved as well as money. <laughs> okay, that actually shaved off a significant amount of time. We've got two days, 12 hours and 43 minutes for our print time. And now we've got 645 grams of filament usage and then we got it down to $12.91. I know that that doesn't seem like a lot of money that was shaved off, it was just like under maybe $3. However, if you're printing a lot of stuff, that can really add up. And again, this is just the base filament cost for our 3D prints. I have gotten a lot of comments from people on my previous videos about going into you know 3d printing and how much it costs to 3d print saying that I didn't talk about the electricity costs and I didn't talk about you know the maintenance costs and all that stuff and I didn't do that because one my videos are more tailored towards people that are hobbyists as well as just beginners in the hobby and I think if you start to tack on things like worrying about your electricity costs and worrying about you know maintenance costs factored into every single print you're just gonna burn yourself out and it's also very confusing I have two Creality CR10 printers I don't print commissions anymore and I don't factor in the cost of my electricity bill into this. I'm more concerned about how much my air conditioner is using in the summer and maintenance costs are something that you do need to factor into owning a 3D printer. However, I don't think you need to factor it into every single print that you do unless you're doing commission work, which again, I'm not gearing my videos towards people that want to get into commission work. Anyways, that is the end of the video. Hopefully I showed you that it was pretty simple to be able to estimate your, you know, 3D printing costs in Cura this way. Thank you again, Van Oaks Props, for bringing this to my attention. It has changed my life. And one last thing, if you're looking for filament, I do highly suggest using Xylotex filament. I tend to use their five kilogram spools for all of my projects because it helps me to not really worry about my filament running out. And I will link a couple of videos showing my setup with it. I just use Lazy Susans in order to get my filament into the printers that way. And if you want to save 5% off your filament order, then just use the code VAULTFOX5OFF and I will link that down below for you guys so that you can get some filament for yourself. And as always, if there are any other questions that you guys have or any videos that you would like me to put on in the future, please leave them down in the comments below. I would be happy to take your suggestions and make them into some wonderful teaching moments for you guys. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time. Bye!